the ingratitude of employers. Fifteen years on a car assembly line, fifteen years of unremitting toil and sacked in a minute's notice. <sighs> the employers of this country have got a lot to answer for. And what did he do? Hit the foreman. <laughs> what do you expect? You can't go around hitting the foreman. Who said he went around hitting the foreman? That's a typical Tory bias, that is. He did it once in fifteen years. Well, that's no excuse. Supposing they all did it once every 15 years, they'd be getting punched more times than the clock. <laughs> not that they punch the clock anymore, that's the trouble nowadays, not enough discipline. Well, in this case, there are extenuating circumstances. What extenuating circumstances? The foreman didn't make his request in a reasonable or diplomatic manner. He used a four-letter word. What was it, work? No, it wasn't. <laughs> I was referring to bad language. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. He must have heard bad language before. Well, maybe he was the sensitive type. Sensitive? Oh, I see. I suppose because he's working class, he hasn't got any right to be sensitive. As a matter of fact, it says here he was deeply hurt. Oh, uh, so was the foreman. Well, it was the foreman's fault. He should have let him sleep it off. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean to say he was drunk? Of course he wasn't drunk. He'd had a few, but he wasn't drunk. Said he was drunk in the Daily Mail. Oh, did it? Well, according to the Daily Mirror, he was overtired. Why don't you get the Morning Star? You'll probably find he came from his sickbed. <laughs> he was not drunk. If he wasn't drunk, why did he fall asleep? Because he was worn out from running up and down ladders. I thought you said he worked on the assembly line. Well, that's at night. In the day, he's a window cleaner. <laughs> what was he doing two jobs for? Because my innocent friend, he had a wife and family to support, and the economy of this country is based on two pay packets. Only because they want their holidays in Benidorm. Oh, I see. I suppose the working classes aren't entitled to holidays abroad. I suppose if you had your way, all they get is a fortnight's hop picking. Look, if they want holidays abroad and colour television, they'll just have to work harder instead of going on strike all the time. Listen, everyone is entitled to strike. That's the only weapon you've got. The withdrawal of labour is your fundamental right, otherwise you get exploitation. Well, look at Clegg there. Look at the human misery on that face. <laughs> How do you think he got that? I probably asked him to lift something. That's bureaucratic exploitation. Hey, Clegg, come here and show him your pay packet. <coughs> I don't want to see his pay packet. That's all right, mate. Come on, Clegg, show him your pay packet. I don't want to. There's no need to be ashamed, brother. We're the ones who should be ashamed. Go on, go on. Show him your pay packet. What about that, then? That's not his total deductions you're looking at, you know. That's his wage. <laughs> Not much. Not much. It's a pittance. He can't live on that wage. Well, he could always get another job. He doesn't want another job. It's vocational, isn't it, Clegg? That's right. Well, I'm sorry. But... <laughs> it's no good being sorry. <laughs> Clegg, have you got a television? No. We had to watch the cup final through the co-op window. <laughs> Hear that, eh? And where are you going for the holidays this year? I can't afford to take a holiday. We'll be out in the garden again. Taking turns on the sun lounger. There you are, eh? Talk about being underprivileged. A family with only one sun lounger. And he got that with cornflake packets. <laughs> Look, I know it seems unjust, but there's only so much to go round. Let me see if I can explain it to you, Clegg. Now, <clears throat> a gross national product is like a large cake. Now, we all get a slice, but some people get larger slices than others. Now, you want a larger slice. That means that somebody else is going to get less. Then he'll want a larger slice. Well, why can't we all have an equal slice? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Norman. But well, why can't we? Because he's doing the cutting. <laughs> because we're not all equal, that's why. No, you're talking to Mr. Big Slice. Not only does he get the largest share, he knows where all the cherries are. Come on, Clegg, we cannot stand around here chewing the fat all day. We're late for lunch. Hurry, hurry, come on. Uh, 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 no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. There's no need to talk to him like that. He's not one of your untouchables, you know. <laughs> no, no, th that's right. What is this nonsense? What are you talking about? I know you believe in the caste system, but this man has got his rights. That's right. I don't have to take orders from you. I take orders from the cleaning supervisor. Right. <laughs> All I'm saying is we're late for lunch and we're wasting time. Now, come on, Clegg. Yeah, yeah, well, you just watch what you're saying to me. I know you're tight. You've only been in the country five minutes and you're driving your own open. <laughs> Stop doing it, can you? What? Agitating, stirring things up. You're a proper little Lenin. Just because I remind people of their rights. Times have changed, you know, Glover. There's been a social revolution since you played with a gardener's boy. I hope you're listening to all this, Norman. You might learn something. I think I'm getting through to you, aren't I? You've got that worried frown again. Is it the inequality of the class system? Is it the unacceptable face of capitalism? Is that what's distressing you? No. What is it then, son? 
boiled fish and semolina. <laughs> what? We've got it again today. Is that all you can think about? You've got a chance to discuss all the major political issues of the day and all you can think about is boiled fish and semolina? Well, I don't like boiled fish and semolina. Well, tell them you don't want it. I'll do that. No, no, I'm the one that has to do all the complaining round here. If it was left to patients like you, there'd never be any improvements. They'd still be sawn off legs without an anaesthetic. <laughs> well, it's about time somebody complained. That boiled fish is diabolical. Well, he won't complain. He hasn't got the nerve. Why do you think they keep taking all them x-rays? They're still looking for his vertebrae. I'm not afraid to complain. All right, then. Go on. Go on. Complain. Oh, golly, what have we over here? It is the excellent boiled fish, you lucky fellow. I wish I was stuck into that right now. But can't I have a choice? Of course you can have a choice. You can start at that end, or you can start at this end. <laughs> Where do you think you are, a five-star hotel? This is a hospital. It's not on for the benefit of the patients. I don't care. I don't like it, and I'm not eating it. What's the matter, Gupta? He will not eat his food, Mr. Thorpe. Come along, Norman. Don't pout. Oh, smells delicious. <laughs> May I? <laughs> Just as I thought. Delightful. <laughs> as fine a piece of boiled fish as you'll find anywhere. Well, you can eat it, then. Listen, we all have to eat this stuff, you know. Why should you be an exception? Your luck is not the steak and kidney pie. You need a pneumatic drill for that. <laughs> now, get on with it. I can't eat it. Well, do what we do. Smother it in tomato sauce. I shan't. I want to make an official complaint. If you think I'm going to complain to Lucretia Borgia down there, you're mistaken. <laughs> Woman's got the warm, kindly smile of a prison wardress. They say she does her own slaughtering. <laughs> now, come on, get off. Oh, wait it? a minute. You can't make him eat that. Patients have rights too, you know. Oh, I see. I might have known you'd be behind this figure. I'm just showing solidarity, that's all. We are not going to eat this rubbish. I'm afraid he's right, Mr. Thorpe. As you know, I'm not one to complain. But the cooking does lack a certain variety. Perhaps she could try something else. What do you suggest? Um, trout manier, <laughs> coq au vin, bur bourguignon. Uh, a little wine does wonders for the jaded palate. You're not suggesting she cooks in wine. She's barely master gravy. <laughs> now, come along. Stop all this nonsense and eat up. Come on, Norman. No. Just a taste. I don't want it. Just for me. No. <laughs> I think I take your point, Norman. <laughs> Was that you? No. Then it's either me or the radiator. <laughs> I think it's me. It's probably a warning. I can't go without food for very long. I convert everything into energy. I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I burn everything up. Look at my palms. They're sweating. I could go into a coma at any moment. I know how you feel. I don't know why I let Figgis talk me into this. You won't laugh, but I could even fancy that boiled fish. Who's <laughs> laughing? I'd settle for a boiled sweet. <laughs> I've got a bit of chocolate. Where is it? In the pocket of my dressing gown. It's been there for days. Oh, it's got fluff on it. Leave it on, it'll be more filling. <laughs> what about Figgis? Well, he can find his own chocolate. Well, he's told everybody we're on hunger strike. Well, just because we're on hunger strike doesn't mean we've got to starve. Come on, they'll never know. Oh, rich, velvet, delicious chocolate. We've got the worried. They're holding meetings all over the place. We're lighting a torch which could ignite the whole health service. Is something the matter? <laughs> I've been talking to them in the general ward, asking them to pledge support. What do they say? They're going to take a vote on it. When? After they've had their supper. After their supper? What about our supper? Well, just a minute. You've got something in your mouth. <laughs> yes, you have. You're eating chocolate. Both of you! 
Well, those will never know, Piggish. That's not the point. We'll know. You can't cheat on a thing like this. It's a question of principle. Well, I'm getting sick of your principles. Oh, getting through to you as a glover, eh? Getting you where you hurt, eh? I'm not surprised. You're too soft, too pampered. I suppose you'll not be having IT by this time, eh? Muffins served on a silver salver, deviled kidneys and sweetbreads. Shut up, Figgis! Well, stop moaning. You can go without food for 40 days. We're not going to go without food for 40 days, are we? No, of course not. All we want is an undertaking that the food is going to improve. And they'll give in. They're too frightened of the publicity. Supposing they don't give in? Then we'll just have to tighten our pyjama cords, won't we? <laughs> Norman, I was just passing the corner shop. I wonder if this might tempt your appetite. It's... Fresh cream with raspberry jam, I believe. I thought you might like it for your tea. He doesn't want that, Doctor. Don't I? He'll treat that with contempt. We'll see. He's trying to bribe us, is he? Well, we'll show him. We'll just leave it there. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Did you say fresh cream? Yes, laced with raspberry jam and very, very light meringue. just hung some bacon rind out for the birds. <laughs> wish I was a blue tit. I wish we'd had breakfast. The time we start eating, I won't have the strength to swallow. I can't stop thinking about food. I dreamt last night I was eating a giant marshmallow. When I woke up, I couldn't find the pillow. Where was it? At the bottom of the bed with teeth marks in it. I dreamt about food last night. I was in this little country pub that I know. I ordered grilled Adriatic prawns with tossed salad, followed by pork provençal and a bottle of Puy Loche 66. Ooh. And then I was going to have the chocolate gâteau delicately laced with liqueur and finish off with coffee and Napoleon brandy. What happened? I found someone had cemented my teeth together. <laughs> Probably Figgis. Hello, what's the matter with you two? We can't go on, Figgis. We've got to eat. But we must go on. I can't. I'm hallucinating. I keep smelling bacon and eggs all the time. Look, I'm sorry to let you down, Figgis, but we've decided. Yeah, I'm sorry, Figgis. I can hardly believe it. Black legs, where's your backbone? Where is it? I'm surprised you can't see it. <laughs> we've got to eat, Fig. All right, if that's the way you feel. I just didn't realise I was sharing a room with a couple of scabs, that's no, all. we're not scabs. It's a democratic decision, two against one. I see. Well, never let it said be said that Roy Figgis didn't go along with the wishes of the majority. I can't say I'm not disappointed. I'm bitterly disappointed. But, if that's the way you want it, at least I've done my best. At least we've made a protest. All right, we'll eat. Oh, thank heavens for that. All right, Gupta, we're ready to eat now. You can bring on the food. Sorry, no food today. Everybody's on strike. <laughs> It's inhuman. There are sick people in here. My God! They've turned back the bread van. <laughs> what about the patients? We've got our rights too, you know. Oh dear, oh dear. What a disaster. How very unfortunate. I don't know how to say this, but I'm afraid it is goodbye, my friends. What? All the non-serious cases must leave this hospital. Isn't that terrible? What is it they say? Parting is such sweet sorrow. Get dressed, please. What are you talking about? I'm a serious case. You can't send me back to an empty flat. They'll break down the door next Christmas and find a skeleton in a dressing gown. He's right. You can't do this to us, Gupta. We're sick men. Happily for me, that will not be my decision. That responsibility lies with somebody else. Oh, God, for that, who is it? Clegg. Clegg? He is the leader of the strike. He will decide. Oh, no, he won't. He's not holding a union meeting over my laparoptomy. Clegg tried to stop me driving into the hospital. 
My God, we said and nursed that viper in our bosom there. Uh, apparently, he's been in a go slow for some time, only no one noticed. <laughs> Say, he takes his orders direct from Moscow. Probably draws half his pay in rubles. Do you know he had the nerve to give me the clenched fist salute? At least I think it was a clenched fist salute. <laughs> and I was to discharge the patients. Well, we'll see about that. Fetch me the case notes, Gupta. I'm afraid I cannot do that. Why? I am on strike. <laughs> Et tu, Brute? Pardon? No, it doesn't matter. This is the problem. Don't you see? This is our chance to get rid of them. No more trouble, no more complaints. Gupta, you're talking to a doctor. Do you think I've used my skills in these men to have them discharged by some illiterate buffoon? Mr. Thorpe? Oh, hello, Clegg. I didn't see you there. I want a word with you. You crossed the picket line. Of course I crossed the picket line. I want to get in. We, we were engaged in peaceful picketing. All we wanted was to put our case to you in a reasonable manner. Instead of which, you drove straight over my foot. It's not my fault. You shouldn't have such big feet. Don't worry. I'm proud of this foot. I consider myself another victim of the class struggle. Class struggle. Is this just a time for paying off old scores? You've never forgiven me for stopping you wheeling your bike through the operating theatre. I'm, I'm, I'm not here to bandy words with you, Mr Thorpe. I'm here to tell you that my members will only deal with serious cases, and these are not serious cases. Of course we're serious cases. Listen, comrade, I'm with you, you know that. We all are, we're right behind you. But you can't send me home, not in my condition. My wife can't stand illness. I'm sure you can make an exception. No exceptions, brother. The end justifies the means. The revolution will only succeed over the bodies of the workers. Who said that? You did. <laughs> I wasn't talking about my body, you raving idiot. Who are you calling a raving idiot? What about the dignity of labour? You can't do this to me. We've done it. <laughs> Up the workers. Look at him. He's all ready to storm the Winter Palace. He used to be such a nice little fellow. And it's wonderful way of potting begonias. Now look at him. I blame you for this, Figgis. I discharge you, only I don't want to bow to the mob. I think we should get rid of them. Gupta, I don't think you'll ever be really happy till this hospital's completely empty. <laughs> well, I'll defend their right to be here to the last breath in my body and the last drop of my blood. I don't care if I have to empty bedpans and roll bandages. These boys are my sacred trust. <laughs> Doctor, do you think you could get us some food? Get you some food? Certainly not. I'm a doctor, not a waiter. <laughs> I was thinking about your stomach. I can't go on much longer. I keep thinking I hear the food trolley. Why don't you go and watch your television? It'll take your mind off it. I've tried that. All well, I get are food commercials. It's either two Arabs wrestling over some Turkish delight or someone shinning up a rope with a box of milk tray. <laughs> I can't stand it. I wish somebody would shin up here with a box of milk tray. <laughs> I've been thinking, I wonder what carnations are like. Well, if I could get hold of some salt, I'd tell you. <laughs> are you lot sillier? I'd get out if I were you. The heat's going off next. Well, I've got to hand it to you, Clegg. You think of everything. Yes, you've certainly done a good job, and I'm not leg too. You must be in considerable pain. I can hardly put it to the ground. Well, you want to watch it, you know. I think we'd better take a look at it. No, I'm not. No, got you time. can't neglect a thing like that. Come on. Come on, now, let's get this shoe off. Here we go. Oh, oh, that's it now. Come on. Come on. Oh. <laughs> My God! What's the matter? I've never seen anything like it. You'll never get that shoe on again. I think it's turning blue. I think you're right. I think it's only a sprain. Only a sprain? Do me a favour. Are you trying to frighten me? No, if you prefer to think it's a, it's a sprain, if you want to lead a strike with Burger's disease, that's all right with me. <laughs> the, the burger's disease? Well, that's what it looks like to me. What do you think? <coughs> well, he's certainly showing all the symptoms. What is Burger's disease? Well, uh, to put it simply, it's when all the veins and arteries in the foot close up. Well, don't worry. The pain won't last long. It'll go dead. Unless the clot begins to move. <laughs> the clot? Then your leg will be all right. But you'll be dead. What am I going to do? <laughs> You've got to keep your weight off that foot. Come on, Norman. Yeah, give me a hand. Yeah. Come on. Get him out of this bed. There you go, my and, son. And, 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 you, and you better get a doctor. A, a doctor? Yes. Do me a favour. There's a strike on. You've closed the hospital, remember? Now, we'll do the best we can for you, but you must excuse us if our methods seem a little primitive. What are you going to do? Bleed you. What? <laughs> 
I wonder if you could get hold of a couple of leeches. No, they don't use their leeches anymore. We'll have to cut him and then drain his blood into this bowl. <laughs> I'll bleed to death. No, you won't. We'll stick some cobwebs on it. That'll stop the bleeding. I'll get blood poisoning. That's a point. Ooh. I know what we could do. Hang an onion over the bed. They say that's very effective against blood poisoning. Oh, no, you're not here. Away from here. Me. Oh, it, it, it's Clegg's leg, Doctor. I think this complications are. Would you like to take a look at it? Oh, no, I don't think I could do that, Figures. But, but, don't but, want to be accused of strike-breaking. It, it's, it's serious, Doctor. They, they say I've got Burgers disease. <laughs> Burgers disease? Oh, well, it was just a wild guess, Doctor. Oh, well, it is a possibility, I suppose. May I have a look? Oh, dear. Ah, those radials do make a mess, don't they? Well, well what, what, what? What are you going to do about it? Not much I can do about it. I'd like to x-ray this, but the x-ray department's <coughs> clear that the strike on Clegg. Well, well, I didn't say it was going to go on forever, did I? N uh, now, now we've made our protest, shown our political muscle, we are prepared to return to the negotiating table and seek a lasting settlement. You mean you're going to pack it in? That's right. <laughs> no hard feelings, Doctor? No, of course not. Now, let's see if we can manipulate this foot. Please, Mr. Top, this is no way to negotiate. Let us get around the table. It's coming. It's coming. Yes, and you can depend on one thing. There'll be some improvements from now on, eh? Now he's in here. You'll see. It's the poor that gives to the poor. Oh, there'll be some lovely, delicious little things coming through here now. What's the supper, good tea? You're in luck, gentlemen. Boiled fish and semolina. <laughs> what a mark watering the past. Not again. After all we've been through, we're not standing for this, are we? Shut up, figures. Don't care what it is, I'm starving. Not like you, I can't live on air. But it's rubbish. Well, let's eat it first and then complain. I want a word with you lot. <laughs> I understand somebody's been complaining about me cooking, turning up their nose over me boiled fish. Well, who is it? <laughs> Have you been making derogatory remarks about me mullet? <laughs> me? Good heavens, no. I think it's a triumph. I think that the way you hide the natural taste of the fish under this glutinous white sauce is, um, well... Only you could have done it. I didn't think it was you. You're too much of a gentleman. Was it you? No, 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 I like it. It's one of my favourites. I can't get enough of it. Delicious. Well, I'll see you gets it regular, then. <laughs> I can always find a little bit extra for those who appreciate it. So there are no complaints. Yes. I don't like boiled fish. <laughs> I'm not interested in what you like. When you brought us out, you said we'd have to be prepared to suffer pain and hardship. But as soon as your leg starts to ache, you bring us back in again, don't you? Scam! <laughs> right. So there are no complaints. So why don't you ask Figgits? I'm sure he's got something to say. I don't have to ask him. I know he likes my cooking. The way he came down and scoffed that Cornish pasty last night... <laughs> You did enjoy it, didn't you, Joe? Black leg scab! I make you think you why, I make you think you why. I know I am, I'm sure I am, I make you think you why. Yes, I make you think you why, I make you think you why. I know I am, I'm sure I am, I make it be why. Oh yes, I make it be why. Yes, I make it be why. I know I am, I'm sure I am. Yes, I make it be, 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 be only when I lie.